Thank you for watching this free video tutorial from MoGraphPlus.com. Please make sure to visit our website and check out our premium courses for Cinema 4D, 3ds Max, Arnold, V-Ray, Maxwell, Motion Graphics and much more. And also please make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Vimeo to enjoy our free video tutorials. Okay folks, in this lesson we'll be quickly taking a look at the other V-Ray lights that we have in V-Ray 4C40. Uh, we have these two area light and if I just quickly run the IPR you can see this is what we have right now. Now let me just quickly hide these two lights and turn them off. So the first light that I want to talk about is very spotlight and obviously it's a simple uh, spotlight with some simple options. If I from the camera menu, go to the set active object as camera. I can point my spotlight the way I want, maybe something like that. Okay, and if I get back to my camera, let me actually, let's see. So this is our spotlight, right? And we can just put it back here. And it's a simple funnel of light, basically. If I get back to my camera and actually run the IPR, you can see this is what we have. Let me just quickly also disable my VFB window here and run the IPR. So there you have it. And you have a bunch of very simple options. You have the cone angle. So if I go to something like 50, you can see we have a bigger cone. And if I go to something like 20, we have a smaller cone. Uh, we have this uh, penumbra angle and this is basically the softness of the shadows. You can see right now the shadow edges are very soft because the cone angle and the penumbra angle have this 30 degree difference. So if I go to something like 22 right now, you can see we have this very sharp edge. Maybe let's go to something like 25, right? So also we have this barn door effect which simulates real world barn door effects so if i just enable this and i have the left door if i decrease it and the right one let me create something maybe like this and if i decrease the penumbra angle to maybe something like 22 so we have a sharper edge we can create some kind of dramatic effect as you can see you can have the top and bottom also if you want to adjust them so that's really about the spotlight nothing too specific uh, now let me rename that to spotlight and also hide this probably this is the most useful light of the remaining lights that we talk about here we also have the omni light and this is basically a simple uh, light here, right? So so if I run the IPR again, it's a very simple Omni light that emits light in all the 360 degrees from one point. And if you go to its options, obviously if you want to make the shadows a bit softer you need to increase the shadow radius as we discussed so if i go to something like five centimeter now we get this 10 centimeter we get this softer shadows and you can control the intensity the color or make it an is light by turning on this option right and that was our omni light and the next light that we have is an ambient light. And this is a general purpose light that basically has no direction and adds a certain level of light to the entire scene. So if I turn off this light for now and turn off my two main area lights and run the IPR. Okay, so we have this light and let's say you wanna add just a little uh, cool light to the entire scene so what we can do is to add an ambient light and if I go to its intensity let's go to something like 0.1 maybe and change the light color to something like uh, 
bluish color, right? So now you can see you ha you add that little bit of cool tone to the entire scene using an ambient light. It can be useful to simulate ambient occlusion and GI. It's not, uh, you know, used that much, but you have it in case. So that's our ambient light. And let's me hide this and also hide these two other lights. There we go. Now, if I go to the lights menu again, so we talked about the area lights, we have this uh, parallel light. And it's uh, basically, uh, if I just get back out of the camera, also let me also select the light that we have just created, go to the camera and set the active object as the camera. And let me focus on the and get back to the camera here. Also, actually, let's get out of the camera. So parallel light, basically, it's like a spotlight, but instead of a cone, you have this cylinder that limits the light. So let's get back to the camera. And if I select the light itself, you can see we, you have a few options. You've got the beam radius. So if I go to something like 20 centimeter, you can see the beam becomes smaller, the cylinder becomes smaller. And if I run the IPR, uh, you're gonna get this simple kind of spotlight effect, but it has a, you can see parallel shadows instead of that directional shadows created by the spotlight. And you have this obviously beam radius to control the radius of the beam. Okay, so that's about parallel light and we have discussed spotlight, omnilight, ambient light and parallel light. And uh, we are going to be probably talking about very lightly during the next lesson. And by that, we can conclude lighting section of the course. See you in the next lesson. Thank you for watching this free video tutorial from MoGraphPlus.com. Please make sure to visit our website and check out our premium courses for Cinema 4D, 3ds Max, Arnold, V-Ray, Maxwell, Motion Graphics, and much more. And also, please make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Vimeo to enjoy our free video tutorials.